Hey everybody, welcome back to the Steve Dave Double Shot Movie Review Video Series on YouTube. I'm Steve. He's Dave. And tonight we got a, another original versus remake, if you will. Our first one was so successful with the 9 on Elm Street, we thought, fuck, why not do another one? That's our most successful It one. is our highest streaming. Our second one of. Uh, oh, Behind the Expendables one, our original, but you know, as a new that, That's got age. Um, but tonight we're doing Night of the Demons 1988 versus Night of the Demons 2009. So let's kick it off with the original 1988 one. And uh, this is a movie I was kind of surprised Dave hadn't seen. Uh, yeah, I remember uh, I had always seen the, the box. Cover, yeah. And, yeah, very famous. I, and I'd never seen it. I, I'm not in the cool horror guy <laughs> club to say I'd seen it. Well, never saw it. Basically, the story goes, there's a girl named Angela throwing a kick-ass Halloween party, uh, and it's it's the 80s, and uh, her, her and her buddy Lynette Quigley are getting stuff for the party, and... And they're throwing the party at an old abandoned funeral home, oh, wow. and uh, inviting their friends. Very and colorful so, cast of uh, stereotypes and kind of weird people. Regular, but, but no, it's, it's also because it... it uh, it opens with uh, the the jack lantern on the roof of the car and the great party asshole. Like every 80s movie, especially when there's a party involved, there's the party asshole. All party. he wants to do is one fucking thing. Party. And, and, but this guy, Stooge is his name. I have to say, he's my favorite party asshole of all movies. The pig nose guy. That guy don't give a fuck about nothing but rock. Even when he almost kills his fucking car. And he gets the flat drive. Yeah. What's he want to do? Well, party! He wants to walk to the fucking party. And, um, it's a. It's. I like it. It's it's a good spin on 80s. Um, well, how can I say spin on 80s movies? It is a fucking 80s movie. But, but I'm just saying, it's like. It's your good teen body count, you know, of, uh, you know, a couple little groups meet up, get in the house, and then the demoning ensues. And. I must say the acting is quite bad. Though. Oh, that's what I liked about it. It had that old <laughs> school, bad. especially when they're sitting in the car when they pick up uh, Judy yeah. and her date, and they're sitting in the car. It does the classic B movie. Everybody waits for their turn for the line. Yeah. Like you can tell when they're saying their lines. Person A is saying the lines to me. Person B, and I'm just sitting there saying the line over and over. Yeah. And I, but won't we get caught? Like, there's no reaction to what the other actor just said. It's just, just gotta, get the fuck on. Just gotta get this right. Just get this right. Okay, yeah. let's do that. I loved it. It was awesome. I like the crappy B movie style acting. Um, the effects are pretty good as far as makeup. This I forgot the name of the guy who did the special effects, but he did Nightmare on Elm Street uh, Part Four. Did the special oh. effects for that. I got the poster. Right he there. is uh, <laughs> Linnea, He's Linnea Quigley's ex-husband. They met on that production, and um, they uh, well, became friends. Oh man, our sets falling apart. They became friends, and Linnea quickly said that there wasn't any real, like, big love connection on the set of Night, Night of the Demons, but it was after that. Yeah, they started yeah, dating. But, yeah. And it was after she did the scene where she's in Freddy's chest, she gets out. Very and small he, role. And he proposes to her. He proposed to her. Yeah, right yeah. After. That was actually on the extras, the uh, little the Linnea interview. Quigley yeah. interview. And uh, it's got some decent extras. It's a cool movie in the way of... Um, the stance of the kid, the kill lineup, because some people get killed, some people survive. Yeah. And you wouldn't like. Um, Surprisingly, the black guy survives the whole way through. Well, yeah. that's not a surprise. That's just a myth. That's the myth. Black guys usually, it's either a black guy or a woman is usually the hero, yeah. which is what's that cool is about horror movies. Thing. So, um, that is action movies, black guys. I don't know. But it's usually not the horror. Movie. But it's it was a cool flick. I like Sal. He uh, even though <laughs> Greaseball. They're in the yeah, in the middle of it seems like Midwest Ohio, he acts like he just rolled out of the Bronx or Queens. He's like, hey, oh, I can't do Interestingly but, though, speaking of the uh, featurette, well, then quickly said it was filmed in like the hood in LA. Yeah. And she's like we could hear gunshots all night long while we're filming it. It kinda sucked and, but they had good security apparently. But yeah, I was like, oh, <laughs> I dug it. I thought it was a fun, cool 80s movie. I highly recommend it. Um, 
Interesting scene. I like the, how they torture the old guy. And yeah, that's the great. Old, old school book ending. Book, it yeah. starts with him and it ends with him. Damn kids. Um, I just I don't know. I enjoyed it. The acting was horrendous, but it was really good in some parts. A lot of boobs. Whole lot of boobs, especially to see Linnea Quigley naked again, which is always a treat. And a very bizarre lipstick going into a boob. Which, which that was uh, paid, silicone plastic. Yeah, and it's paid homage in the remake. Like but um, that was really good practical effects. It was, yeah, it was believable. Really, the effects are fun. The effect, the demons are cool looking. Yeah. Except you could tell with Sal, the surgeon guy, by then you, they're probably getting close to the end of production. They gave up. They're like, we're just going to put some blood on yeah. you. Just look, 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 look like you're... That's like, scary, kid. Yeah, be, be scary. Go, you got one arm. Move. Apparently, the girl who plays Angela, her only real movies were three of these movies. And now she's a pet whisperer. She has a book and a DVD and every fucking. However, she still does a few horror conventions to sign shit and make a buzz. She's a pet whisperer. Off Night of the Demons. Yeah, she's, she's a God pet damn whisperer. Play. Yeah. Okay. Interesting side note. Yeah. Um, the one thing it did have was that good '80s soundtrack. Oh, good the good '80s music. Just the intro oh. alone with the animation. The song is fucking great. I mean, the, I, I bear to say that's probably better than the movie. The computer so. date? Yeah. I just like, um, I think 80s horror movies had a way of using the music of, shit, I don't know if it was anything the director had in mind for like, just use the music to set the scene up, but I don't know, it was just something about it. Maybe it was because I was a kid during that time or something, but there's a magic to that. Yeah, there was. There was. I give the movie, I'd say two and a half tree stars. I have to agree with that, yeah. It's gonna have three stars. It's good. It's good. I'll purchase it. I figured you would. So, figured. Yeah. Well, sorry if we didn't do such a top job on the synopsis, but... Uh, you get the idea. We're a little rusty. We gotta get back in the swing. <laughs> get back in the groove. Right. We'll be back at you with the new one. Well, we should probably take a shot. Oh, uh, yeah. Fucking A. 1988. Yeah, yeah. This is, uh... Yeah. It was a very good year. 1988, my fourth grade year. <laughs> right on. Yeah. yeah. Cheers. Yeah, yeah, cheers. Oh, just so anyway. Oh, hey, world! Welcome back. Hey. To the Steve Dave Double Shot Movie Review. He's Steve. And I'm Dave. And uh, we're back at you with Night of the Demons 2009. Starring one of our favorite actors. His man crush, and I don't know why. Little Eddie Furlong. Little Eddie Furlong. Um, and boy, has he let himself go. <laughs> in many ways. <laughs> um, well, it's back at you with Night of the Demons 2009, the remake, starring Eddie Furlong, Shannon Elizabeth, it's and a couple of... chicks who look like they came off a porn set. Pretty much, yeah. Uh, this was directed by some guy, when I watched the extra features, he did some other movies. He's kind of a nerd, which I kind of like about he it. He wrote Mother of Tears. He wrote like, yeah. Dario Argento and Ozzy Argento's first foray back into a movie for, uh, since they did Trauma. Yeah. Um, but anyway, this one takes place in New Orleans. The first one seemed to take place like in Ohio or some shit. It's got a lot, di it's a lot different. I mean, it's... The same, but different. It's, yeah. She's a professional party film. Yeah. She's got it. It's, it gives you the impression she's got to make money on this. Yeah, or, or she's going to be on the street um, with a cat. The first one was more the kids all kind of knew each other and they were just meeting up and it was a it was, closer shindig. The original two was more high school kids. This one's more early to mid-20s people. Yeah. 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 And and the ones. yeah, the party's being thrown by Angela, professional party thrower, played by Shannon Elizabeth. From 13 Ghosts, American uh, Pie. American Pie. Was she the naked chick? She was. Yeah, she was. So, and um, she's holding up. Yeah, she's holding up. <laughs> she's holding up well. She's holding up well. But uh, basically, the way this one goes in is, is it's a huge rager of a party, and um, basically they have to cut the number down uh, to make the plot work, and that's. It's weird because the plot device in the remake would have worked better in the first one because the demon backstory in the first one is it's just that land is cursed. 
Yeah. And it's just a demon that possesses many. And in this one, you find that's a backstory, backstory of seven of demons. Yeah. And if they possess seven people on Halloween night, then uh, they can take over the world. As opposed to in the first one, they can just possess as many people as they need, in, but it has to be at night. And it won't in the world because they can't cross the underground stream. But in this one, it's weird. I didn't yeah. think about that, but that just hit me. You could have switched the plots. Yeah. And it would have actually in a fucked up way fit better. Because in the second one, in the remake, the plot device for it to move forward, they have to have the cops raid the party. Right. Which kind of hit a bump for me because I was like, okay, where's our body count now? Yeah. Because I knew they had to be possessed, so I'm like, where's our... But, uh, Although the interesting, I did like in the party that they had, there was a Victor Crowley and a Jigsaw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lo the, the, noticed and that. the Jigsaw to me seemed kind of a... Uh, Poking for because he's just so he's on a tricycle, yeah. yeah. And the way he's riding <laughs> is just so labored, and I don't know. It, it looked like stuff. a fun party, though. I gotta but, say. But uh, you have Eddie Furlong's character, who's a drug dealer. Down and out drug dealer. He's in debt, yeah. which he does look like a down and out drug dealer. <laughs> it, it dawned on me he looks like Dave Foley from The Kids in the Hall and Michael J. Fox. Fuck, had a kid pissed on it and made it get strung out wow. and they gave him a hump back because Eddie Furlong has a fucking hump back. He does have a hump back. Must be tough being Eddie Furlong. Must be. He also has terrible teeth. It does that one close up. And weird fingers. You know it's that too. He's got <laughs> weird, <laughs> weird <laughs> kind of like sharp but fat. Fat shit yeah. hands. Yeah. And, I mean we're big husky guys but Eddie Furlong is that guy you can tell was never supposed to gain weight. Mm -hmm. You know. I mean, I mean, but like, yeah. So must what, be the divorce. Must be. He's. We're, we're, we're holding in there for you. You hope you get it back with a little weight. I don't he know. does, cause he, I, don't I know. care for some reason. Yeah. But uh, yeah. I gotta say one thing about this movie. Damn, if it isn't colorful. It is very, very colorful. Well, uh, that's something I gotta give the original over. It is, but that's again, that's those '80s horror movies. They have a. a uh, a texture to the film quality yeah. that even when they're low budget as shit, I still believe them. This one at certain times and certain movements of the camera, I thought they were filming it with this fucking camera. It yeah. looked like shit. It looks cheaper, like it was made for a sci-fi network. Um, Microphone effects are great. Yeah, it's got boobs too. It's got a lot of good boobs. Yeah, mm. and the thing is, th th these two movies both made me realize I hate in a movie love scenes. I think they kill the pace of the story. <laughs> but a horror movie with boobs is cool. And it's not on a like a uh, uh, not on a creeper level. level. Yeah, it's not on a jerk off level. It's just somebody you're like, hey, I got a boob there. Yeah, it's boobs, yeah. It's, 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 it, Who I'm doesn't gonna, like boobs? It's with the gore. It, it, it's kind of like, hey, there's a boob, all right. Hey, he got his face ripped off, all right. The kills, oh, the kills in both of them were good, actually. Yeah, yeah. Um, the effects in this one were good. Uh, the use of music, though, in this, like a lot of newer movies, I felt was pandering. I like the typo negative, though, but I like it typo was, negative. But to me, it feels like it's pandering. It yeah, it was a little like, much. Like, it's almost like that dad wearing a fucking Nirvana shirt, you know? Like, see, I'm still cool with Nirvana. And yeah, like, yeah, it was kind of... Too much there. Yeah, like they even they play T S O L. Yeah. Know, or fuck the dead. Yeah. It's just weird because it's like when I watch um Return of Living Dead, they play the cramps that fit the fucking tone of the movie. Yeah, yeah. This well, just made well. me feel like it was the dad going, you know, trying yeah. to be like, I'm still here. Well, I can still do it. You know, it's pandering. This one also stars uh, low budget Brittany Murphy. Which one was that? The main girl. Who's yeah, uh, is that spoiler. the chick from uh, Freddy vs. Jason? That's Jason. I swear, because yeah. what was that other movie we well, saw? Her Murphy. Murphy. No, we saw her in another movie. I was like, man, she used to be hot. What happened? But she was hot in this. She's still hot. Yeah, no, but there was that one movie we saw. She did not look good anymore. Fuck it. I knew I recognized her. Yeah, that's right. Pointless ending though, because you see yeah. in the original, the demons are about to take over the world, so the lady has to hang herself. Oh, spoilers. Spoilers, spoilers ahead, alert. <coughs> yeah. Um, anyway, 
And so she has to hang herself so the demons can't get her just before sunrise. Well, this chick, playing off the same thing, hangs herself Blood. as the fucking sun comes up. Yeah, it's kind of dumb. And then it turns out, get ready, she didn't really hang herself. Um, but the way it's set up, the ledge she jumps off of, shit you not, she could have just sat there. And it, everything would have been fine. Been cool, yeah. Because it even shows like before her neck even snaps, the demons are melting. The demon deaths are cooler in the newer one. Yeah, yeah. Because of the way they, you know. Um, sorry for the spoiler edition. But uh, it was good. Like uh, the like and dislike in this remake, I guess. Yeah, Eddie Furlong, every time he stuck his tongue out, it was creepy. Yeah. Because he did that a lot, like, ha <laughs> yeah. a lot, and I didn't like it, because he's a fat guy with a super pointy tongue. <laughs> I'm a fat guy with a fat tongue, and I think, I don't know. Um, I'd give it two stars, huh? I'd give it two, and I'd say out of verses, I prefer the original. I, I do. Uh, the reason why I prefer the original is Linnea Quigley, who is in the remake in the costume of herself in the original, yeah, she, which she is does. cool. Yeah, um, Linnea Quigley, just because she's that cool uh, screen queen. I like the the um, what's her nut uh, Amelia Kincaid. Okay, yeah. Shannon Elizabeth is hot and cool, but I liked her better. She had the more of the creepy high school girl look to her. Yeah, like I kind of. Uh, Stooge was awesome because that dude, even when they discovered it was like haunted, shit was still it was fucked up. He still just wanted to fucking party, uh, which those party movies have to have that guy. I like half and half though. I can't really decide on which one I like the most. I will purchase Night of the Demons, and it made me want to see two and three, which I'm sure it gets worse. I watched part two. I will purchase it, but I will not purchase the remake. Right. Too colorful. It looks like it was made for sci-fi. I thought it was going to be in the theater, actually, when I heard they were making it a couple years back. It's I thought it was for a long Yeah, man. then again, Eddie Furlong's in it. Um, but, uh, yeah, I give it two stars. Yeah, I'd get two. Two um, stars. It, uh, I don't know, I just... Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's better than a lot of shit that comes out well, these days. Well, that's true. It's better than a lot of shit we reviewed, too. <laughs> yeah. Which we got too shit faced and gave too many stars to. That, that does happen. Um, on a side note, world, Super 8, we went and saw that today, is the height of mediocrity. Uh, on the way over, I just it hit me. I was like, man, that's the most mediocre movie I ever saw. I like the kids, though. It's this milk toast. That's... Kids were entertained. Could have been better. Yeah. Could have been. But to Eddie Furlong, what I would say is brush your teeth. You smoke like a stupid ass. He chews on cigarettes. What the fuck? It's not a cigar. Uh, lose some weight. Coming from a fat guy. Yeah, lose some weight, yeah. fat boy. Yeah, from two fat guys. <laughs> but still, we were never in T2. Yeah, you so, got a lot to live up to there. Yeah, because you were in that Crow movie. <laughs> hey, um, with another American Pie star, Tara Reid. Oh, yeah. Wow, he's been in two. Um, brush your teeth. Hit the gym. He's got a lot of stuff coming out though, I saw. Look at his IMDb, I'm sure yeah, it's all straight to video, but. Yeah. yeah Did you see him in the interviews? Oh, they do I'll watch the streaming. Oh, see, you think streaming's so great, but yeah. if you get the disc, you get the extras. It's true. Oh, everyone's sitting up in their seat and interviewing. He's all laid back, smoking, talking like, yeah, I mean, to be scared, what I do is I think, like, there's a bear in the room. <laughs> I like to think there's a bear with me, and that's what gets me. Mode and I'm like, it's fresh bears. Fucking I'm afraid of bears, man. <laughs> but what the fuck? He's talking like he's method and shit. You never know. I mean, my, it was John Connor. I mean, shit. You know what's funny as shit though? I was reading on his IMDb that he turned down the role of John Connor in T3. Yeah, yeah. I'm like bullshit. Bull fucking shit. He was probably yeah, begging. No, he's probably like giving hug jobs for that. <laughs> But uh, let's take a shot for Night of the Demons yeah, remake. Yeah, there you go. And uh, that's that. That's that. Yeah. Thanks for tuning in. Please send us some recommendations of, hey, I watched this hunk of shit or this awesome flick.
and uh, we'll check it out. And if we're super shit faced like a lot of times, we'll give it way more stars than it deserves. But if we're slightly toasty like tonight, we'll give it the right amount. We'll be serious. Yeah. Either way, we'll be back at you. We got a list that we don't really stick to around here. So this was on it, and it the last thing was on it. In fact, it was probably on there for a year. So yeah, <laughs> we'll be back. We're gonna be back with that list, and we'll be back at you more often because I'm sure all 38 viewers might actually review that one day. But it'd we be need pretty to. easy. I already give you the five <laughs> fucking stars. Actually, just buy it. That's the just, review. Yeah, go it's fucking. Just buy it. Greatest movie ever. <laughs> Dan O'Bannon's fucking man. Anyway. Later. Take it sleazy.